In this video, we're going to consider the step response of a circuit containing a resistor and an inductor. And again, by step response, as, a, as compared to the natural response, the step response takes us from one, in this case, one constant current to another constant current. And the results that we're going to have will describe how that current transitions from one constant current to another constant current. So here's the story. The switch here has been in the A position for a long time. And any currents and voltages that might have been changing before have now died out. The voltage across the inductor, which again V is equal to L D I D T, because the current has stopped changing, the voltage across that is zero, th that inductor is effectively a short circuit. There's no voltage drop across there, so the current, that initial current, in this case, I of zero will equal I of zero plus, which of course equals I of zero minus, because it doesn't change instantaneously. That current is simply going to be V sub S divided by R sub S. Alrighty, at t equals zero, the switch now moves to this position. Unlike what we experienced in the natural response circuit, we have another source of energy in this new circuit. So over time, this current, which was established by this voltage source, is going to change to a current, a steady state current that is the result of this current source here. And over time, the current will stabilize so that once again the inductor will become a short circuit. At that point it will be shorting the resistor, this resistor, out. As such there will be no current flowing through this resistor and all of the current will at that point be flowing through the inductor. So let's take a look at how this uh, all plays out. To analyze this, let's write a node equation at this top node keeping in mind that the current flowing through the resistor is equal to V over R. And when it's in parallel to this inductor, that voltage is going to be L di dt. So summing the currents leaving this node, we've got KCL, we have I, the current through the inductor, plus the current through the resistor is going to be L di dt, which is the voltage divided by the resistance, or L di dt divided by the resistance minus I sub s equals zero. Now let's clean this up just a little bit. We're going to take the I sub s to the other side and uh, multiply both sides of the equation by R over L so that we get then di dt plus R over L i is equal to R over L times I sub S. Again, to separate the variables, we're going to subtract this term from both sides, leaving us di dt is equal to. Now, as we do this, let's factor out a negative R over L on the right-hand side. So we have a negative R over L here, which leaves us with an I minus I sub S in parentheses. I divide both sides by this term in parentheses, multiply both sides by dt, and we're left with di over i minus i sub s is equal to negative r over l times dt. Integrating this, on the right-hand side, we'll be integrating from 0 to t. On the left-hand side, we'll be integrating from the current that corresponds to i or to t equaling zero. We're going to call that I naught. And we'll be going up to the current that corresponds to a value of t, which is I of t. Once again, we've got di over I as I minus I sub s, but that doesn't change the integration. So when we integrate both sides, we have then the natural log of I minus I sub s evaluated from I naught to I of t is equal to negative R over L t evaluated from 0 to t. Evaluating the left side of the limits, we get then the natural log, the natural log of I of t 
minus I sub S minus this evaluated at the lower limit or the natural log of I naught minus I sub S is equal to simply negative R over L T. Combining the log terms, we get then natural log of I of T minus I sub S in the numerator divided by I naught minus I sub S down in the denominator is equal to negative R over L T. Now again, we're trying to solve for this term here inside the log as an argument of the log function, so we exponentiate both sides and we get I of T minus I sub S over I naught minus I sub S is equal to E to negative R over L T. Now, multiplying both sides by this denominator and then adding I sub S to both sides allows us to solve for I of T and we get then I of T is equal to I sub S plus I naught minus I sub S e to the minus r over l t. Once again, we're going to take this constant and write it in the form so that we can have a tau defined, where tau is equal to l over r. And this then becomes, uh, noting a couple of other things. First of all, after a long time, when the switch has been in this position for a long time, the current is stabilized again, so the di dt is zero, and this is a short circuit. At that point, there will be no voltage across this resistor, so there will be no current going through it. And all of this source current will be flowing through the inductor. In other words, I sub s is the final current, or the current as t approaches infinity. And we can write it then as I of t is equal to i of infinity, or the final current, plus the initial current minus the final current, or i as t approaches infinity, e to the minus t over tau. And if you compare this to the similar equation, or to the formula that we got for the step response in the capacitor resistor circuit, you'll see an awful lot of similarities to it.